So I created this guide for you, some things you can do. Consume more fermented foods, foods, drinks. You can even take probiotic pills. Those will all help you out. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Give your, give your healthy bacteria all those, you know, all those prebiotics, all those healthy fibers for them to digest and grow. Eat less sugar and grains. So we don't want to feed the bad bacteria in our body. Eat more whole foods and less refined foods for the same reason. Avoid chlorinated water. Pretty easy. Just prepare a day before. Get your pitcher of water in the fridge. And limit antibiotic exposure, both from your meats and your MDs. Any questions so far? So drinking beer and wine is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> So, so chronically drinking alcohol will actually damage your gut microbiome as well. Um, small levels, say it's le less than five drinks a week, didn't have any effect. But any more than that did. So I actually read a study. Um, out west, they have a facility where they help alcoholics get over alcoholism. And they tested their gut microbiome. This wasn't like a planted question either. <laughs> so, so they tested the microbiome, and those that responded best to treatment had the best microbiome. And so those, those that couldn't get through rehab had the worst gut microbiome. And so what they started doing, they started supplementing probiotics into their program, and they got better results. Isn't that amazing? What's fascinating about this, and what I think a lot of people miss in this conversation is, so what do we do for the serotonin deficiency in, in America and people? We give them what? Drugs. Serotonin. We don't fix their gut. Are you with me? So we, we do this with every situation. So instead of healing the cause of the problem, we treat it with something else, right? So the <coughs> child, the child has a leaky gut. Things are getting through the gut that shouldn't. They're repeatedly getting sick, and we treat that with an antibiotic which does what to the gut? More harm, right? So, so essentially, it's just a backward system, right? It, look, look at something even like a vaccination reaction. You would say, why would one kid have a reaction and one not? We know from what Dr. Brown just told us that the microbiome could have everything to do with it. What if this child just had three doses of antibiotics right before they had a shot, and this child has never had a dose of antibiotics before they had a shot? Am I saying that's the only thing? I'm not saying it's the only thing. It's obviously a multifactorial factorial problem, right? But you get the bigness of this. Because maybe that one child had a healthy microbiome that was able to eliminate the mercury, and one didn't have a, mi a healthy microbiome and couldn't eliminate the mercury, and essentially has neurological damage associated with that, right? So it's about putting the story together for you guys and, and understanding that there's something way bigger going on here than drinking kombucha. It's, it's about healing your gut, which without a healthy gut, you can't have a healthy life. It's impossible. Right? It's, it's not that we would ever say that this is the only solution to your health, but it is a major key piece of it, right? So if you're putting together a puzzle and one of the pieces of the puzzle is missing, it's not a great picture, right? If 10 of the pieces of the puzzle were missing, you might not be able to tell what it is. If one piece of the puzzle was missing, you might be able to tell what it is, but you still can't see what you want to see in that picture, right? So this is part of the puzzle of putting together what we want to put together, which is a healthy life, right? Because our health is the greatest asset we have here on Earth, right? Um, it, it, it is where we should be investing our time and energy. Um, in, in a lot of the classes that I do, one of the questions I ask to start is I say, if our health is our greatest asset in life, and we can usually come to terms and say that, yeah, you know, maybe somebody wants to argue with me that it's number two or number three, whatever. It's one of the top three most important things in your life, right? So if how I looked at how you invest your time, your money, your resources, your thoughts, is it consistent with that? Or does it look like your health is an afterthought, right? And so all we're trying to be is intentional and purposeful helping you put this puzzle together.